Jacob Sherman is joining us from the Milwaukee Historical Society, and Kay Endel uh, is here to make remarks on it. And you pronounce that K? Correct. K. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, all right. So our next item of business is the Japanese American Incarceration Remembrance Day Proclamation, which will be presented by, or introduced at least, by Councillor Angel Falconer. And then you all probably heard all of that already. Um, so, Angel. Yeah, well, like I don't have a presentation, so I will kick it off very quickly here um, to our guest speakers and presenters. Um, I will. I'll just note that I was surprised back in December um, when we had our um, Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day to learn that we hadn't done this before. I, for, I, I guess in my mind we had. Um, so I really am very grateful to um, Mr. Uh, Sherman and Endo for joining us and giving us a little bit more um, background and a little bit more information that I think our community will find very valuable. So I will kick it off. Over, I should say. All right. Great. Thank you, um, uh, Councillor Falconer and uh, Mayor Gamba. Uh, my name is Jacob Sherman. I'm a resident of the Ardenwald neighborhood. Um, and I'm here tonight representing the Milwaukee Museum. I think as many of you know, uh, two no, weeks exactly. ago, exactly, we held an, we event, held an here event here um, recognizing the uh, 80 years after internment of Milwaukee's Japanese American community. This was a letting library lecture series event, um, kind of in partnership with the Milwaukee Museum and a number of other partners and individuals who might be interested in this can uh, go to the city's YouTube page and, and find more about that event. Um, but this was really kind of also the culmination of some research that a number of people had been doing for the last six, eight months that started kind of out of uh, some of my own personal curiosities about the history of my home. And in looking through the 1940 census, started to see kind of name after name of, of different Japanese Americans who lived in the Milwaukee area and started to kind of ask the question, you know, if, this, if these individuals and families lived here in 1940, what happened in 1942? kind of during the war and recognizing that this year would be the 80th anniversary of the forced internment of many of those individuals. Um, the event that we held was in partnership with the Japanese American Museum of Oregon who is a phenomenal partner on this and opened up some of their archives um, showing us uh, documents ab about Mr. Indo's uh, mother kind of firsthand um, and was also and supported kind of in partnership with some funding from the Clackamas um, Arts Alliance. So. Um, Without much more on that, I would encourage anybody who is interested to, again, go to the city's YouTube page where they can see the event, um, hear more about Milwaukee's Japanese American community, as well as kind of the broader Japanese American experience in Oregon. Um, and in kind of advance of the proclamation, I'd love to welcome a very special guest who's um, honoring us tonight, um, a lifelong Milwaukeean, um, Mr. K. Indo, whose, whose mother, Chio, was someone we actually kind of profiled in our presentation um, two weeks ago. Um, so I'll welcome up Mr. Mr. K. Indo to share a few remarks uh, before the proclamation. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Kay Endel. I was born September 26, 1933. So on the uh, day that we were uh, incarcerated, I was eight years old. And we went from Mrs. Holsley took us to the Gresham Fairgrounds. And then from there, we were transported to the Portland Assembly Center, which is now the uh, Portland Convention Center. And then in that was in May of 1942. Then August of 42, we were uh, relocated to Minidoka, Idaho, which is 16 miles northeast of Twin Falls, Idaho. And we were there for two and a half years and six months we were on seasonal leave to Ontario, Oregon. And the one interesting thing about the people in Minidoka 
they saved the farmers in southeast Idaho and eastern Oregon. They harvested the uh, sugar beets and potatoes. The sugar beets were used for ammunition in the uh, water district. And uh, our family, there were six of us, and my and my mom of uh, seven, and my dad passed away in March of 1942. And that was very, very, very sad day. And then in May, as noted, we were incarcerated. Uh, in that Milwaukee area, from Milwaukee Marketplace, down to where uh, Bob's Red Mill has was over 60 Japanese uh, people living in that area. And of that, uh, I could only uh, find 11 that are still alive. And there are three of us that live in that area. There's Dutch White Nabi, Tom White Nabi, and myself. And I'm the only one that lives in, in the property that, that I was born at in 1933. So that's just a little bit history of what happened. And and I like to thank after the war, I like to thank some of the people in Milwaukee that really helped us, like uh, the First State Bank of Milwaukee, which is now Key Bank, Greg Blasher at Price Wright Nurse uh, Grocery, Ralph and Buddy Cooper at uh, Cooper Meat Market. Every pharmacy and their family, the Milwaukee Pharmacy, the Hosley Furniture, Joe and Junior Bernard, uh, Bernard Garage, and uh, as you know, Joe Junior was the mayor at Milwaukee, and his son was also. Bill Roberts at uh, Roberts Barbershop, and uh, Max Pitt and Milwaukee Lumber Company, and they they really were very nice, and also the uh, educators at the Milwaukee School System. And as far as I know, there was no discrimination against us coming back or when we went. There was probably some behind the back we didn't know about. And that, and I'd like to thank you guys for uh, commemorating the uh, our deal before we were incarcerated 80 years ago. And I thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for coming in and presenting. Um, it must have been a pretty frightening and disorienting thing for a eight year old boy to experience. Well, in, in a way, it was. But uh, when we went to camp, uh, we didn't eat with the family. We ate with our peers, so it was quite as bad. And uh, we. we Played all day with our with our uh, people because the uh, the older people had jobs, so they couldn't come and eat with us uh, at times. And my mom was uh, she was a cook's helper, so she couldn't help. She had to help cook, so she did not eat with us. And my older brother was a dishwasher. Wow. Any other questions? Yeah, let's see. Does uh, anybody else on council have questions? I don't have any other questions, but thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, and, and yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing your memories with us and, and offering to be here with us. Thank you very thank much. You very much. I would add my thanks as well. And, and if people are looking for more of the history, um, there are some videotaped interviews with like five or six people from Milwaukee on a thing called, I think it's Jacob will probably remember better than me, but I think it's called the, the Den Show, D-E-N-S-H-O digital library where they interviewed. In fact, I think Mr. Endo might've been one of the people interviewed for that. Yes, I was. You were? Okay. Well, you could probably tell us where to find it then. But I watched those interviews. One was in Japanese, but the others were all in English. And um, I found them fascinating. I found them very interesting about the history of Milwaukee, of the internment camps, and all of that. Yeah. So thank you for joining us.
You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> well, I will read the proclamation. And forgive me if I mispronounce any of the names. Whereas Milwaukee's history is important to understand, observe, and recognize from all perspectives, and whereas Milwaukee had a small but thriving Japanese-American community in the early 1940s with at least 87 individuals of Japanese heritage reported in the 1940 United States Census. And whereas the last names of these individuals and families included Endo, Fujita, Hirofuji, Koida, Kuribayashi, Kuribayashi, Nakamura, Sasaki, Shinto, Terusaki, Takemoto, Tami Sayau, Sayu, Yoshi Izawa, Yamada, Yoshitomi, and Watanabe. And whereas many of these families were successful farmers, florists, or nursery operators, including the Watanabes and Yoshitomis, who once had large celery farms at the present-day Minthorn Springs Natural Area. And whereas on February 19, 1942, United States President Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued Executive Order 9066, resulting in the forced removal and incarceration of over 120,000 people of Japanese ancestry from the West Coast, over two-thirds of whom were U.S. citizens. And whereas on May 7, 1942, people of Japanese ancestry from Clackamas County and Eastern Multnomah County were ordered to report without trial or due process to the Portland Assembly Center before they were forced into concentration camps in unfamiliar places like the Minidoka War Relocation Center in Hunt, Idaho. And whereas we recognize the Japanese families in Milwaukee and Clackamas County that were uprooted and yet somehow, despite these experiences, thousands of young Japanese American men, including young Japanese American men from Milwaukee, demonstrated exemplary heroism and courage to enlist in the U.S. Armed Forces and bravely fight in World War II to defend the nation that was abridging their own freedoms at home. And whereas we recognize that when released, some of these members of our community may have lost their homes or property, and that Japanese Americans worked hard to rebuild their lives. And whereas in 1983, the Federal Commission on Wartime Relocation and Internment of Civilians found that Executive Order 19 uh, 9066 was not justified by military necessity, and decisions that resulted from it were not driven by analysis of military conditions. And whereas on August 10, 1988, United States President Ronald Reagan signed into law the Civil Liberties Act of 1988, finding that Executive Order 9066 was not justified by, the, by national security and that the incarceration constituted a grave injustice to the Japanese Americans. And whereas on February 22nd, 2022, the city of Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Museum and the Japanese American Museum of Oregon held a Letting Library Lecture Series event to educate the community about, about Milwaukee's Japanese American history and to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the issuance of Executive Order 9066 an event which forever changed the course of American history. And whereas the city of Milwaukee is proud of its Japanese American history and recognizes the values, recognizes and values the ongoing contribution from its Japanese American community. Now, therefore, I'm Mark Gamba, mayor of the city of Milwaukee, a municipal corporation in the county of Clackamas and in the state of Oregon, do hereby proclaim February 19th, 2022, as Japanese American Incarceration Remembrance Day. Well, um, again, thank you, Mr. Endo, for for coming in and sharing a little bit of your story. I look forward to uh, to finding that site and watching those interviews and learning more. And uh, on behalf of the city of Milwaukee, um, we apologize for what happened to your family.
Now, may I say in Japanese, Domo Arigato. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.